Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Yesterday we did this one. This was a Patreon exclusive. Um, that was a hard hitter. Uh, there's been a lot of hard hitters lately. It's just kind of the times that we're in. There's a lot of a lot of questions that need to be asked as people wake up. Humanity wakes up to the fact that humanity has been a little too trusting. A little too trusting in everything we've been taught and told. And so, you know, there was, uh, and this is a, a question that we get quite often, people saying, are we forced to reincarnate? Is it a reincarnation trap? There's like all sorts of, um, there's all sorts of lines of thinking when it comes to reincarnation. In fact, the, the norm is the concept of reincarnation or transmigration of the soul. Reincarnation is when you come back time and time again, basically as a human, uh, where transmigration is is the concept that, you know, perhaps in past lives, you weren't human, and maybe in future lives, you won't be human. Uh, again, when you look to the indigenous people across the planet, which for the most part, indigenous beliefs have been very, very suppressed. And this is what why we focus on the fact that, you know, again, at this point in time, about two thirds of the world are looking through an Abrahamic lens. And again, they're, they're taught something which is not necessarily what was accepted as the norm or as the fact in times long go gone by. As we say so much and so often, the victors write the history and the history is always being rewritten. Uh, but when you look to, again, uh, whether we're talking about aboriginals in, in Africa or Australia, indigenous people in uh, the Americas, or in Europe, you know, again, uh, our European, uh, quote unquote, pagan uh, roots, again, you'll find different belief sets uh, that were wiped out by Christianity as Christianity spread. And again, you know, there was the, mo the money and the power behind Christianity, and then uh, Islam has done its thing as well. But when you look to what most people believed, it was just a given that this is a temporary existence and that we do come back time and time again. In the Buddhist philo philosophy, it, it's really all about um, releasing ourselves from coming back uh, time and time again. Again, Buddhism comes out of Hinduism as a whole. Uh, it still has, uh, again, some of its core tenets there, uh, Jainism, Sikhism. There's so many different uh, philosophies and religions that have come out of uh, the Hindu family tree, so to speak, um, and have branched off in di different directions. Well, you know, it's been said there's 70,000 different forms of Christianity alone. So, you know, again, nobody is in agreement on anything. And maybe that should be a clue that we're not supposed to be in agreement on everything. One size does not fit all. You know, I, I, I like to look to the indigenous people for my teachings because um, to me, I don't see that they're indoctrinated. They they hand information down they are very much one with the land uh they're very very spiritual they do have certain belief systems there are uh, certain tribes that uh, believe the body when when someone passes away the body must be completely burned you don't even leave not a single hair not a single fingernail because that can be used they feel it can be used in black magic to control the soul and where do they get this information? They get this information from hands-on. They get this information from just witnessing it. They get this information passed down. They get this information from the stars. They get this information from the star family. To me, they are the least indoctrinated that you have out there. And they, they are the most uh, closest to plants and plant medicine. They're closest to the earth. They're closest to having the, the right answers to me. So, yeah. Well, when you look at it and you look at the situation that somebody like that is living in, they're not living in, in palaces of luxury. They're not, you know, uh, encumbered with all the gold and jewels and, and all the things that really, truly 
end up distorting the heart and the spirit and tempt the spirit the entity uh, that is embodied into uh, putting itself in a position to maintain a certain lifestyle go down a different road you know when you look to the indigenous people i mean i i Think of the tribes that we still see down in the Amazon. What do they own? They, they own, you know, a spear. They might own some equipment for fishing. That's very rudimentary. Uh, 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 <laughs> nothing, nothing. You know, they're they're not trying to impose their belief system or way of life on anybody. And they're not taxed to death. There is no tax. There is no leeching. You know, when we look to the power structure that's on planet earth religion is perhaps the number one tool used Uh, and it's a fear of punishment there was a a good article that somebody had written i was just glancing at and um yeah when you under start to understand that this has all been about gaslighting humanity into uh fearing what happens when we're no longer in the body and you know how else can you control people and and have them do things they would not do unless they were threatened with eternal torment and punishment but that's that's not what we find to be the case mm-hmm. in fact you know again um i've i've had the blessing of about half a dozen friends and of which i've interviewed and done we've interviewed and and we've done videos on it that have been clinically dead you know and and near-death experiences and actual clinical death and what did they find on the other side nothing but just amazing love and and i felt that love too when cindy has been full under channeling and these entities that we call the devas come through the first the first several times i mean i broke out crying because i i've never felt that type of love um on this side even you know being nursed by my mom uh, you don't have that type of love on this side the love that's on the other side is is almost beyond description and this is the reality so there really is nothing to fear um and this is really again how the system gets people to do things uh, that they normally wouldn't do and it is through control and gaslighting and uh, all sorts of terms we can use narcissistic abuse etc etc so the question comes up are we forced to come back here because a lot of people are saying at this time i don't think why would i want to be here at this time when we have all this conflict and aggression and darkness well you know again this this is a shift of paradigms this is what's going on it it literally is you know a a massive war on a spiritual scale and this is really when when humanity is going to break free or at least a portion of humanity is going to break free from the chains that have kept it shackled well you know i mean um are we forced to come back the the short answer and this is going from my personal experience no we're not forced to come back we're absolutely not forced to come back when we are out of body it is a completely different world it's uh, love is very tangible love is all there is love is that thing that um you can almost put your hands on love is very hard to describe love is a very powerful emotion and there is a love of expansion so when we do decide to come here it is a decision out of love because we want to bring expansion and i understand uh very much that this is very difficult to be in this world is extremely painful so i mean that's probably not a very popular answer because people in their skin that are going through so much pain and turmoil and trauma and trials of life they're like screw this this really stinks and i have been there i've absolutely been there like this really is not okay i don't like it i'm not happy with it i don't remember making this decision and that's because we are in the 3d we are in the ego we are in a different place than we are when we are out of body so there's two totally different lines of uh existence going on 
Um, but that's my short answer based on my personal experiences. And I, you know, being out of body and remembering so vividly what it was like to just float in front of source, I, it was a whole nother world. It, it was all about um, just being and love. It was all about expansion. It was all about understanding. It was all about the love of growth. It's the love of growth that keeps us coming back. When you are an eternal being, you have all the time that there is. And, and, and we learn that time itself is simply an illusion so that we could process things in this reality. And in fact, I do believe that we could come back and tweak these things. The, the guides have given us some, some clear hints on things, you know, again, without interfering with the human experience, to which if you knew everything when you're in here, it wouldn't have as much impact. You wouldn't get as much growth. That's really just the bottom line. That's why we have this temporary amnesia, but yet the temporary amnesia in a Kali Yuga is much more intense than, say, in a Golden Age, in, in a Satya Yuga or a Treta Yuga or Dwapara, which is where we are now going into the Bronze Age. Because there's certain things that we do still kind of know. And many of us know, or always knew, uh, that the, the fundamentalist religious mindsets were just not right. Uh, always sensed that these things were, were not truth. They're not the way that they really, you know, the world really is and the afterlife really is. Uh, that's because, again, uh, it, not all of us are of the same age and experience from the individuated soul aspect, as source is always birthing new souls. Now, when you look at that, you know, what, what is a soul? Well, it's ultimately a fractal of source. Again, think of a diamond and think about the fact that the light goes through and every single facet will reflect uh, and refract that light in a different way. Well, that's, that's all of us. No one size fits all. It's never supposed to be that way. And this is what we can see from the system. Again, corporations, the root word of corporations is corpse. <laughs> you know, so it, they're, they're very, very dead. When we see what people go through where they have to learn scripts, you're, you're taught to not be an individual. No, it, quite the opposite. When you go, join the military, the military will indoctrinate you. It'll break you down. It'll tear you apart in order to mold you into what it wants you to be. Not not an individual, but but working as part of a unit um, in a way uh, that you give away a, a big chunk of your individuality. That's what this society, this is what this world uh, is is really demanding. It's that you give away your uniqueness, and that's not the that's not really the intent here. Why would we be here in these times? Well, uh, you're probably a natural rebel if you're here in these times, you know, that's, that's, and listening to this, you have this innate sense that, you know, something is wrong in the world, and really, at the core, you want to help fix it, and that's why we're paradigm busters, we come in, and, you know, this is something I've noticed in myself, that I do have a very, very rebellious attitude at certain things, but there's other things where I have this natural feeling of, of compliance to the natural, where I, I you know, have a natural innate respect for Mother Earth, and certain things really bother me to the core uh, in a way that's not rebellious. And so there's this duality there and so as a, as the years have gone on and I've analyzed it I realize that it's a dislike for the system and everything about this system which has has made it harder and harder to stay in this system as time has gone on and it's led to decisions um, which have made life a little tougher for me personally um, in many ways, and because I found that I, I can't comply with corporations. I, I can't go ahead with uh, living a life that to me is a lie because it just doesn't resonate with me. There are many um, kids right now that have been born into this world 
that are starseed light workers that the system has waylaid uh, with the tools that they use in order to keep these individuals from living up to their full potential. As we know, there was you know, programs that were instituted that were non-optional, that if you were to, you know, again, go to school, you have to do certain things. It's led to a, a rise in, let's just call it a societal dysfunction uh, syndrome. Uh, that many people know it the words the word starts with a and u if you know what I'm talking about here I think many of these people were intending to be paradigm busters and and shifters they were coming in these are souls coming in to uh, you know eliminate the darkness that's been on the planet and the darkness that's been on the planet in acts of self-preservation has done everything it can to make sure that these individual souls um, are not able to function fully. And this is what we have going on here. So, yeah, I do think we have choices. We, we know this, again, from firsthand experience. Um, Cindy has, has not uh, spent decades studying different philosophies and religions. So what she gets she gets naturally through her abilities um, as an amazing intuitive yes she is a channel um, and also uh, she can very much do uh, what Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost does and and the dead do line up to come and talk to her because they know that she could see and perceive them um, I would have the same thing too because I've been activated for a long time we talked about activation of the light body what does that really mean over on heart's own and you know these are the big questions but you you can see because of the indoctrination on the planet that people are more concerned with with the things of this world and the system than they are true spirituality unfortunately uh it's it's that you know glittering syndrome you know people unfortunately have been really truly uh completely brainwashed into uh and even programmed in our dna programmed into uh going towards as you know our dna itself has been so altered but we can override that we can reprogram our own dna you know again uh dr bruce lipton somebody that's talked about this there's there's little choices that you can make that can truly um, set you free from the system so that you can live out your original intent because again this is just one aspect of yourself you are a much bigger person think of uh, the character in the game and think of the one that is controlling the controller you you are outside of the game in reality but you've put yourself in this game so to speak uh, to shift paradigms, to learn, to grow. It's a temporary game. And, and again, that analogy um, is, is perhaps one that can trivialize being in life where this is not trivial. This, this is really a huge opportunity for growth because when we're, when we're outside of this realm, uh, growth, the growth is, is, is different. It, it's slower. Um, it, this is the opportunity uh, to, to really jump and, and really take great leaps in growth when we go in uh, to the embodied experience. And when you look at the times that we're in, these give you the most opportunity for, for growth, the challenging times. Again, it's like going to the kiddie rides or you're going to go on that real crazy upside down roller coaster. I think a lot of us have been sent here to, you know, challenge challenge ourselves and challenge the system in such a way that, to me, it's like you, you want to s step right smack in the middle of it and start working on it from there. I, I don't see how to change a system from outside the system when it's as big as it is. It, it just is. I mean, it, it's to me if you look at it realistically it's embedded in our very dna this system but what if we were to press into the system and what if everyone started you know demanding or only buying things that are organic what if everyone started 
only working with that that is natural? What if people only went into things that are going to make their health uh, much better or their spirituality much more expansive? What if we were to twist the system in such a way that they would be more forced to go with our way than their own way because their own way is all about making us sick and keeping us sick and making us like you know one-stop shop from cradle to grave um you know at at whatever buying whatever we need to keep us alive no what if we went into alternative everything it's just not that we could do that i think that's the direction we need to go in and uh, I don't think it's bad to have things. I don't think it's bad to have money. It's like, where is our soul? So that's just the question that I ask myself whenever I'm having to look at any type of technology because we are in a, this world and we do need technology. Mike and I need technology to get this information out to you. Uh, we need technology to advance ourselves. But I think just a careful sit down and thought, it's like, okay, what am I going to do with this technology? How am I going to, how am I going to make my life better? How am I going to help other people? And that's, that's how I see the world we live in because it's forever um, changing. It's forever evolving. Evolution is something that we're not supposed to get away from. It's, it's the change. And when we are out of body, when we are out of body, it's different. So it is for the love of expansion. It is for the love of expansion is why we continue to come back. Well, you know, when, when she was talking about evolution, there'll be those, again, uh, that are so conditioned that they only can conceive of uh, Karl Marx style. <laughs> You know evolution and as we were talking about on the last video uh, or the second to last you know Karl Mar Marx is the other side of the same coin to, to capitalism you know communism capitalism they're they're the same entity just what flavor do you want because the reality is again Karl Marx is a cousin to the Rothschilds uh, so when you see and you understand that they create these systems, they create these political systems, they create the religions, they create um, all these elements of our society that gives you a choice. Which do you want? They don't care which one you pick because, you know, again, they've created the whole system. And when we look to spirituality, uh, again, spirituality is something that's unique within the individual it doesn't have to be labeled in any certain way. It's not one size fits all. And again, I do think uh, that there is this concept that there's soul traps out there. Yeah, I think there are traps. There are traps to try to keep us um, reincarnating or, or keeping us in the darkness uh, so that you know we'll keep coming back at the frequency of the system where the system can control when people die very very traumatic deaths like you have on the battlefield there's a confusion that can set in and yes there are still ghosts uh, from the civil war times that are on uh, gettysburg for instance they're, they're they haven't processed yet now time on that side is very different time in the in the astral on the 4d is very different than our 3d um, but we do see and again we we talk from direct experience um, as much as uh, from any sort of philosophical system that we've read about um, because we've encountered many different spirits uh, countless spirits you know well see some people sometimes post on X have you ever had an encounter with a ghost or with a, a non-physical being yeah all the time it's just the norm and it is the norm for for um people during every age but the kali yuga and it's really only in the kali yuga that we don't have these uh recognized experiences because they still happen all the time it's just that you you know say well that can't be that you know it's not that it, it must just be a trick of of light it's a trick of my mind i didn't really see a shadow over there etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. you know remember when my my dad died because my dad died um 25 years uh before my mom passed on 
and he visited her and it terrified her she because you know she was somebody that was brought up in the catholic church but never really believed she just did it out of habit um and you know even when she was in her last months i would talk to her about the afterlife and and don't worry you're just going to find yourself outside of the body and you know tell her and she'd be like well i don't know and and yet you know cindy was able to connect with her and in fact i knew when she was about to pass on because i was in nevada she was in connecticut but i was doing standing meditation and i felt her grab my chin here because she always liked me clean shaven she didn't like me having a beard and mustache you know she was from that generation and I could feel it was her and her energy tugging on my beard, and I knew she was close to passing over. Um, but yes, in in dreams too, many of our dreams are are not just figments of our imagination. They are processing, and sometimes we actually really do absolutely contact those that have passed on in dreams, as well as venture off into other worlds and other realms. This is the reality uh, of what we are. Again, we're just in the body. If you make note of it and really start to pay attention, you can recognize that, that moment when you're starting to get ready to leave the body. Often there's a little rocking sensation. You might feel a little bit dizzy or disoriented or like a lifting sensation. And, and then you will start to notice that you're getting impressions from somewhere else. Well, you're, you're actually out of body. You know, lucid dreaming is something we should work for. Uh, keep a dream journal. Again, this really helps with first remembering your dreams, which often have messages for you and also, also often talk about things you really, really need to process. And then also you'll recognize when you're not really processing, but you're actually outside uh, somewhere else on the astral plane. The Buddhist monks have kept detailed records of uh, the vastness of the astral plane, and it is very, very vast. There are all sorts of places to go and explore. It is limitless. There are worlds within worlds. And the guides have said that each incarnation is, is creating a new world that we can go back and explore at any time and we could recreate things we could make big decisions in a different way and say you know if you've always wondered well what if i did go and become a, a, a chef a doctor a nurse or whatever what if you didn't what if, what if you didn't make one of these big life choices well in the astral when we get out of the body you could go back and, and revisit all that and play that out again from a different angle. And that's part of what, what we come in here to do is to literally uh, create new opportunities and new worlds for us to explore later as we are all creators in, in training here. I think a lot of people sometimes are concerned because they feel like, oh, when I die, I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose my partner. I'm going to lose my life. But you take everything with you. You take your life essence and everything that you've accomplished with you. And that's then, you know, created into your into your world that you are creating. But everyone, all of your loved ones, they don't just go away and you don't leave them. You're you're simply in another form. You're in another existence. You have another uh, a way of looking at things, another way of thinking. Now, I have seen people who are in a lot of trauma stop and they spend some time um, just sort of resting, just in a, in a state of resting. And it can be a little sticky and gooey because they didn't have time to process a lot of the information, maybe toward end of life, maybe toward a lot of their lives. So when they pass, they simply create a resting spot. And that's what I call, I call it a resting spot. And I can tell people where their loved ones are. And sometimes their loved ones don't want to communicate. Um, they're just in that state of being. And, and that's okay. But we don't lose anything. It's just a new place. You know, this is a little article, Conscious Lifestyle Magazine. 
the evidence for reincarnation scientifically documented true stories that prove past lives are real. Oh, there's been, yeah, you know, there's been so many of those. It, it's probably in the millions. Uh, as far as documented ones, certainly in the tens of thousands, there have been so many different researchers, so many different um, people in different professions, medical professions that have done past re life reg regression. Um, you have cases of kids uh, that are telling intricate details of their last life and that have been verified and, and there's no way they could have known this. You know, there's so many of these stories. If you go looking for them, you'll find them everywhere. And this is, again, because this is, you know, <laughs> this is the reality. When uh, in the Bible it, it said you must be born again, and you have so many people that do all these different ceremonies. Some people believe, you know, you have to do it this way and that way. I mean, it, the reality is you're talking about reincarnation and transmigration of the soul. But, you know, again, it's been twisted into uh, this ceremonial act or that ceremonial act, or you got to say these words, you got to say those words. No, it's all about your frequency. It's all about um, your, your energy and emotion, because, again, uh, that's what the emotions are. It's energy and motion. What frequency are you holding on to? Uh, the reality is, again, society and the system indoctrinate us into a different way of thinking and they also tell us you know that again like cindy's had one of her uh great grandfathers i think it was that was a guide and she just always called him tony and tony was always there well that was the spirit guide you know and and again you'll have people of a fundamentalist mindset that think all spirit guides are demons uh, yeah, but I mean, even the word demon comes from daemon, which meant a nature spirit that could um, often be very, very benevolent and beneficial and actually help you. This is where the system has got you listening to nothing but the system. And if so many of the people that we know that have overcome stage you know, three and four cancer, uh, the system told them they would be dead and they're not. They've, they've, they didn't go with the system. They got out of the system, and and they healed, and they're fine. And we've seen this time and time again because we, when you diagnose somebody, it's again what the system does. Diagnosis in in a form is is a system of black magic because here you have an authority figure saying, "Sorry, nothing could be done." In a white in a white coat, you know, ceremonial dress, you know, again, it's something that we're, we're, we grow up with and we think it's the norm, but in reality it's twisted and it's distorted and it's in a way a form of cursing somebody and getting a negative outcome to manifest. This is where, you know, we have to really not trust anything in the system, question everything, go within and and find out for yourself you know be your own true truest version of who you want to be in uh in the hindu belief set uh what's our purpose it's self-realization well what's self-realization well it's finding out who you really are and who you really want to be and that's unique for each individual you know if you really want to pick it apart you do look at these doctors they are in a ceremonial dress and they they do make a diagnosis and they do write things down on paper i mean these are all shamanic ways of being and they're taught this uh, <laughs> through a different measure a different way and they write things down on paper and we can even go a, a step further and their consciousness does carry power so if they have diagnosed mrs jones of having stage four cancer and she only has three months to live they're going to write this in her chart and guess what that has power and that makes me nervous <laughs> that makes me nervous because thoughts are things and that goes out into the world of consciousness so this is where mike and i are both kind of like i don't want to go see a doctor i don't i don't know what they're going to write about me i have no idea and i don't want them to i don't want their consciousness to have power over me and it can get sticky yeah i mean it, it's really interesting and I, you could like let it go and m make yourself really really concerned or you can just sort of stay stay away from the system yeah well i've been blessed to have uh, my contact with my guides 
be at critical times where a little voice would tell me, no, you don't have to accept that. No, you don't have to go see a DR. Um, you know, and and it, they purposely kept me out of the system. Um, so, you know, again, uh, little things like the use of antibiotics. Antibiotics literally mean against life. And, and this is this is what the system does. It, it, it's it's really not about benefiting you. It's about benefiting itself. So when you look to uh, about a 10 year period before the plague upon the land came, there was an awful lot of naturopathic doctors having accidents. Um, you know, this is again going off on a little bit of a tangent, but it's all one thing. It's one system. It's one system. Um, you know, naturopaths are, are what, that's the only doctor I've used in like 35 years uh, or so. I mean, probably, yeah, 35, 40 years. And, and the reality is I've, I've really very rarely used doctors and not at all in you know since um 9 time not not at all i think i had stitches once that's it um you know again i i would you know they could set bones things like that um but i i i personally do not believe in allopathic medicine at all um and absolutely do believe in the power of herbs and diet um to heal and to cure and the power of the mind and it's recognized again that so much dis-ease is really just emotions that haven't been processed in normal times. Now the world has gotten to be so toxic, our food, our water, our air, everything is so toxic. It, it's, it's all about overwhelming the system. And the, the religions are toxic when you think about it. You know, if, if you do believe in that concept of the fact that you were born, original sin, means that you should suffer forever i mean it doesn't get any worse than that gaslighting this is where you know those whole concepts um they're they're toxic concepts they're horrible it's it's there's nothing acceptable about that and that's the difference with with us i can't i can't put you know makeup on that pig it's just there's nothing it doesn't make any sense to it, because you know a lot of times people will take the tact that well, be gentle with them. You know, I think it's better to be honest. We don't have time to be gentle in in this particular uh, time point that we find ourselves in. And again, question everything. Yes, reincarnation is is exactly uh, what we we do have, and everybody knew this in other ages. And transmigration, in fact, because again, we're not always human. Now, it's interesting because you do have the mystic side of things, which is the antithesis to the uh, fundamental side of things. And in the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, uh, yeah, they, they do believe in reincarnation. And you'll find it in Gnosticism as well. And again, the Gnostics uh, were persecuted to the point of, of not really existing openly. They dared not. They would be wiped out. You know, again, the Cathars, you know, they were killed in the millions by the church. Um, everybody that has a belief set that's opposite of that fundamentalist belief set has been persecuted, yet the fundamentalists are taught the whole time that you're going to be persecuted. But when it talks about you being persecuted, it's really you, the, the people that had the indigenous belief set on earth when this military inv invasion took place and yes they control through the political systems the religious systems the medical systems these these are all uh the systems of the dark side so yeah absolutely you know the gnostics also um believed in reincarnation uh the gnostics there were many different gnostic schools as well um some had a very very dark uh vision of this world to the point where you know you wanted to escape it at all costs kind of like uh, a buddhist point of view too in that you know why would you want to come back here because this is the world that's created by the demiurge as they recognized you know that the god of the old testament or the gods because it is in plural of the old testament are very very dark beings um, not full of love and light exactly the opposite but this is also um, because they were persecuted so much in those times, it, it was very, very hard to take. And this is from Hermetic Academy, 
when you when you look at hermeticism same thing again everybody everybody uh, recognize that souls come into physical existence uh, because of um, various reasons depending on which which school of thought but but ultimately it's a learning experience and you know again so many people were were looking for Enoch and Elijah to come back uh, you know from the from the biblical standpoint when you look to the concept on the other side of um, resurrection because it's interesting because when you look to again the Torah the Torah is the five books the first five books of the Old Testament the ones that are attributed to Moses the Talmud is commentary on those five books uh, when you look to the Torah there really is nothing about the afterlife again it's because it's about the here and the now that it's concerned with but when you do look into some of the different and in fact um, some some Jews really didn't believe in an afterlife uh, some believed more like what the Greeks believed that there was this shadowy existence um, in which the disembodied could see the embodied but couldn't take part and yeah that's basically ghosts and 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 this is this is that period right after death traditionally it lasts for different periods depending on the individual um, you know how long we need to process what our our death look like because when you look to the legends of the golden age both Greek and also Vedic um, you see in the golden age humans just simply decide well I think I'm done with this you know I want to try something different so they would literally lie down to go to sleep and leave the body permanently it was that gentle in the golden age as opposed to to everything that we experience but the whole concept of resurrection is truly when you look at it closely bringing back from one some part of bringing a soul back into one physical body that truly is black magic that's a very dark ritual that's that's you know reanimating something that is dead is not um, anything of the light at all in any way shape or form and if you look at our religious belief systems they are uh, cluttered with it i mean it's all over the place and then they they turn around and they're telling us what to do and, and to me it's just not a safe place to be with this religious system and i understand when it comes to love and making decisions based out of love but what what if your heart is just tweaked just enough where you think you're bringing something to life out of love <laughs> that no that's just you're reanimating it and that's not of a soul that's that's a wombless there's no womb involved after something leaves the body it needs to come back through the womb to have that soul again so you're putting in in essence some sort of disembodied being probably a very powerful demon someone who can uh somebody who can um animate that particular body and you know to me it's just not okay no and in fact it does sound a lot like a zombie apocalypse when you think about it yes. you know so you know this is where everything is upside down uh and as this person says uh, this might be highly blasphemous if you are religious read at your own peril and and it's just somebody that's kind of ranting but it's a it's a rant that comes out of realization that the world is upside down and yeah it there is black magic going on when soldiers are dressed up in their particular uniforms that's a black magic ritual and why do they use patriotism because that's the motivation you live in in the most wonderful place in the world so you have to fight for that place even though those borders change all the time you know in fact your country might not have existed you know when your grandparents were around uh it's it's all it is 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 just giving people a logic and a reasoning and and triggering them emotionally to go march off and be the sacrifice or you know take a sacrifice it's one in the same thing and the world is under a black magic spell uh, to go back to the uh, original uh, question that somebody had brought up is is this a 
um, is this truly something that we're forced to do, reincarnate? No, but we, we, we're not forced to. And we can also decide not to stay in, in the 3D, 4D construct. We can move up uh, into the 5D. I, I think, again, unless you're traumatized to a real high degree, which this system does purposely all the time because of things like war, and, and traumatic uh, ways of ending life, it, it can make it so so that the soul can can have a hard time processing, and and thus end up you know coming back and doing it again in a um, less than ideal situation. When I look to my mother, you know she wasn't firm in in really her beliefs. She really was not firm in her beliefs at all, even though she was a Catholic from start to finish. Uh, she really didn't believe and you know she just recreated her environment on the 4d uh, for a period of almost two years was was planning to reincarnate and thinking about reincarnating uh, in a totally different area like Asia she was looking at China and the possibility of that but then she decided nope and she went up into 5d so she merged back into her higher self which is a very different persona than the mother I knew. Um, a very, very uh, strong individual. Um, not that she wasn't strong, uh, but she, no, I would say she was gentle and, and very, very kind and very, very considerate and compassionate. Um, but the higher self version of my mother is very strong, very powerful, um, and used to having uh, a lot of authority of sorts with her. She has, she has a very, um, different air than she did um, energy than she did in this one particular incarnation but that's part of the growth of this incarnation mm -hmm. well it was night and day you know watching his mom go through go go through the various forms of being you know so people people definitely change we change from the time we are born until the time that we pass away and we have to keep in mind that Death is a part of life, and it's not something bad. It's simply a change. Um, it, it, you you change in form, or our loved ones they change in form. You know, I I don't like the religious system because it is truly based on human sacrifice, and I don't like that. It, it's it's my choice. You know, I, I choose to blend my life, my body, and my soul as much as I can with Mother Earth, and, and I choose to be around people who understand that and respect that about me. I did try, like, like I, I tried to go to church. I wanted to do the, all the right things. I, I wanted to go to Bible all, study and... All the right things the system says. Yeah, all the right things that the system said were right, because I, 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 I wanted to have purpose. I needed purpose and and meaning and and all of those things but when as soon as it hit me that the religious system is based on human sacrifices like i can't do this anymore you, you know i would try to go to bible study and i would then the women were absolutely lovely and i i loved conversing with them and i really do i miss that uh connection with people but i couldn't continue to listen to opening the bible and the verses that came out because i knew where it was coming from now i mean i had advanced up and and beyond that so now i i have a different realm that i work in and i just make sure it's okay based on me what i think is most important not what somebody else tells me is important absolutely and when you look at this uh older gentleman here he's puppeteering uh and yet the dog is is, is so interacting with uh a nun a live version and this is so much how the system it which is ultimately ai and and here they're just getting us used to the ai the ai has been here the whole time the ai has been here you know it's the ai has been in existence longer than the earth has been in existence recreated from tiamat that was the original planet uh, this is how long the AI has been in existence. And it, it does what it does to get us to react a certain way. And here is a very, very gentle, you know, um, example of that from a perfectly innocent standpoint. But we could still get the um, understanding. It's all about conditioned response. 
Well, yeah, I mean, just look at the dog and think about that for a moment. He's um, interacting with a, a lifeless entity, yet there is another bigger entity who has a different thoughts on his mind and different ideas than what this dog has. This dog is very innocent in the sense that, hey, this is a friend and I'm, I'm having a good time. He, he can't uh, step back and see the bigger picture and that's where so many people are stuck they can't step back and see the bigger picture of who really is in control of that thing absolutely so i hope you guys got something from this um, look forward to your comments and your questions please do share let us know what you want to hear more of um, again that's very important to us because we want to give you guys what you um, want us to go deeper into whether it's you know whatever it is whatever aspects um, that you feel that you need at this point in time again if you do want to reach out to us for uh, either energy work contacting uh, people that maybe have passed on looking at your vedic astrology chart all the information is on every single uh, video so every single uh, video I'll just show you guys so you can see like if you come over to here this is how you do it and you go over here click more that's all everything's there it goes on and on explaining everything um, and also all the links so you could reach us at our evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com uh, location and so as always much love may be blessed by the true creator of this universe which is one amongst many source bless namaste namaste